Hi, thank you for the introduction. So I'm gonna, my name is Roman and I'm gonna present um, our work uh, that I co-wrote with my two supervisors, Anke Brock and Wendy Mackay, on how to integrate rigorous qualitative methods into the design and evaluation of safety critical system. Okay. So I guess everyone here know uh, how to control an aircraft, but let me summarize quickly. So um, an aircraft is controlled in the three different axes. So the vertical, lateral, and longitud longitudinal axis for the altitude, heading, and the speed. Uh, an aircraft can be controlled manually, but in this presentation, I will take a closer look to the automation, and more specifically, the autopilot. So when the autopilot is engaged, uh, the aircraft automatically follow a target uh, on each of the three axes. So for example, maintaining a speed or um, reaching an altitude, for example. Uh, there are two possibilities to select these uh, targets. Either the pilots can choose the targets by controlling the interfaces, or the pilot can ask the aircraft to um, select the target by its own. And in both cases, the pilot uh, has to engage mode to ask uh, the aircraft to follow this target. So a mode is a specific, um, correspond to a specific behavior of the aircraft. So there is uh, a lot of uh, interface in the cockpit to engage those modes, uh, but in this presentation, I will focus on uh, the FCU um, and the FMA. So the FCU allow the pilots to control the mode and the FMA allow the pilots to check um, which statu uh, the status of each mo uh, mode in each axis. So this is an FCU. As you can see, there is a multi multiple button that you can turn or push to engage, uh, engage those mods. And uh, as you can see again, there is a few information in these interfaces to really know um, which mod, mod is engaged on each um, axis. So manufacturer ask uh, pilots to use the FMA um, to be aware of uh, each mode is engaged. And in the first three columns, uh, the pilot uh, can see the mode engaged for the speed, the altitude, and the heading. To fly an, air, air, uh, an aircraft, the pilot uh, delegates the task uh, of the navigation to the automation, but also supervise the system to make sure everything is working as expected and is working properly. Uh, this supervision helps the pilots to uh, have a sense of what's going on in the aircraft. Uh, and it, this supervision helps the pilots to maintain uh, mode awareness. So mode awareness is defined as the knowledge and understanding of the current and future state of and behavior of the automation. And in this presentation, I will also um, talk about situation awareness um, that you may know, uh, which is a more general concept. Uh, and that is really important for pilots to um, uh, have uh, effective decision making and um, in the cockpit. When pilots fail to update this um, mode awareness or situation awareness, pilots can face situation where the pilot's ideas of the system and the real state of the system diverge. Uh, resulting in automation surprise. And uh, this kind of situation uh, is uh, typically characterized by this question like, what is doing now? What is going to do next? So uh, the pilot is confused. And um, unfortunately, this lake or loss of mode or situation awareness uh, have played a role in uh, several incidents and accidents in the last few decades. and. Um, this make it an essential design consideration. So researchers uh, often use quantitative and qualitative um, methods to better understand the circumstances and phenomenon of the lack or loss of situation awareness. So for example, qualitative research 
uh, is essential for understanding the pilot behavior, especially with respect to the loss of situation awareness and its effect on a successful um, flight operation. So qualitative methods include, for example, semi-structured interview or open-ended questionnaire, uh, analysis of accident uh, or incident report, and uh, observational data in simulator or in, in flight. So such study provide uh, field data that contributes to the development of principle of um, human interaction with the automated system. But this type of study rarely contributes um, to uh, directly to a proposition of new design to improve the situation awareness, uh, even if they, they usually suggest some um, implication for design. Quantitative research includes, for example, process indices uh, based weightings such as uh, eye tracking, for example. Uh, freeze probe or real-time probes uh, such as SAGAT or SART to evaluate the situation awareness and also for example performance based uh, rating where for example a load detection rate can replicate um, pilot's difficulty to uh, maintain a situation awareness. So this type of study quantitative data um, and measure help to determine either if um, design uh, offer a better situation awareness than uh, another design, but uh, such measure can be difficult to interpret and um, and it's sometimes difficult to inform the design and to really understand um, why the a specific design offer a better situation awareness than the other one. So, okay, we have qualitative and quantitative research. So, what's the matter? So, let me explain. Here is a really, really simplified schema of the user-centered design approach um, that illustrates how this approach is iterative and how design concepts are um, successively regenerated and revised, um, alternating between an understanding part where we try to understand the phenomenon and um, how to address it, and the design part when um, researchers often try to prototype um, uh, design and evaluate it to uh, better understand uh, if it supports uh, the situation awareness. And so by reading the literature uh, about situation awareness in the autopilot um, area, I felt like the traditional approach um, used both quantitative and qualitative um, methods to design and evaluate uh, autopilots, but they rarely combine them at the same time. So let me explain. Qualitative measure and qualitative methods are often used at the beginning of the design process. Uh, they mainly focus on better understanding the challenges that arise from a lack or a loss of uh, situation awareness. Such study can uh, provide insights um, into the pilot's experiment, performance, uh, perception and the behavior. And it helps uh, researchers to um, consider implication for design. But I, I, as I said earlier, uh, this kind of study rarely contribute directly to um, a proposition of a new design and novel interactive system to resolve uh, situation awareness. And so there is another type of study where uh, researchers use this implication for design as a start point of a design process. Um, and so they use this implication for design to uh, propose a new design. Um, and quant quantitative methods are used at the end of the design process primarily to evaluate the effectiveness of a um, particular design, especially by ensuring uh, that this new design and new proposition is better um, in terms of situation awareness than the baseline. However, this type of study rarely include pilot's reflection um, into the design process and into the evaluation as well. And this kind of quantitative study often mark the end of the design process and it's not really in iterative and the design, uh, the proposition is not really revised. So we suggest that we could benefit 
uh, from combining both quantitative and qualitative methods to take advantages of the iterative user-centered approach that I showed you earlier, where the design concepts are successively um, revised and regenerated. But how and why should we combine uh, both methods? So I just before answering, I just want to highlight that a few studies do combine both methods uh, in their research and sometimes iterate and revise a design proposition. So this kind of study uh, highlights and illustrates the benefits of combining both methods um, when designing and assessing a, a new design for a situation awareness. So how should we combine quantitative and qualitative methods? So we suggest that we can use the comparative to observation, which is a mixed method introduced by Mackay and McGuinery. Um, this such method could benefit researchers um, working on safety critical system to gain a deeper understanding of how pilots will interact with uh, novel future designs, especially in, um, in safety critical uh, system area, uh, and especially in terms of situation awareness. So this kind of methods diverge from the traditional approach, in my opinion, because it prioritizes qualitative over quantitative uh, measure, and also takes advantages of users' ability to reflect upon and compare their experience with al alternative design variants. So let me let me explain what is a comparative structure observation. So this method involves first constructing tasks that are granted in the real world user practice. Participants are then asked to perform those tasks with different design variants and are asked to compare them to, to each other. This results in a detailed assessment um, of the advantages and disadvantages of each uh, design variant in terms of uh, situation awareness. And of course, um, we focus on qualitative uh, measurement, but comparative structure observation can also gather performance data. So this method allows to further the design uh, of future safety critical system based on uh, diverse um, measure of the situation awareness, both qualitative and quantitative data. So let me let me summarize the elements that we should consider when uh, conducting a comparative structure observation. So first, um, the participant and the population must be carefully selected. So obviously, experiments pilots should be uh, seems to be the better option, but uh, sometimes finding experiment pilots is hard due to um, um, their limited uh, availability. So an alternative is to involve uh, advanced student pilots, for example, or any group that have a deep and strong uh, knowledge uh, that could have some benefits. So for example, they may be less biased in favor of an existing system. For example, if you compare your uh, your new design with a baseline or an existing system. And they might also uncover design um, flows that uh, experiment uh, pilots or experiment experts uh, would overlook given their over familiarities with a, a system. Then, we have to consider the setup. So when assessing situation awareness, a researcher faced the choice of doing experiments in the field or in simulator, a high or low simulator. We recommend for the comparative structure observation to conduct um, this kind of study in a simulator due to safety concern. So each environments, so low or middle high fidelity simulator have benefits and drawbacks. And the key here is to strike balance between the ecological fidelity, the ease of use, ease of access, and obviously depend on uh, the development, the development stage of your proposition of design. And finally, um, comparative structure observation always employ within um, participant protocol because participants are asked to compare uh, design variants and uh, in with at least two different design task and system should be counterbalanced for other and 
Uh, as I said earlier, the primary measure is the participant assessment of the situation awareness of each um, design variant based on their exper experience when they uh, perform the task and when they use uh, each um, design. And after um, performing the task with at least two design, the participant should be asked to explicitly compare uh, those variants in terms of uh, situation awareness and also uh, participants should be asked to um, explicitly highlight both positive and negative aspects of the of each design. So um, as I said earlier as well, researchers may also and should um, uh, include quantitative measure of the situation awareness uh, during each uh, session. So, for example, as I said earlier, you, you can use a freeze probe or real-time probes uh, techniques for assessing the situation awareness or um, Likert scale uh, questionnaire or any type of um, quantitative measure. To conclude, uh, traditional uh, aviation research uses uh, both qualitative and quantitative measure uh, in the, to study the pilot situation awareness, but rarely at the same time. And we argue that researchers can um, benefit from using both qualitative and quantitative uh, methods uh, at the same time by combining them with a mixed methods um, approach. So we present, I present <laughs> the com comparative structure observation and briefly describe the element that should be considered to uh, conduct a successfully um, study to assess the situation of awareness of such a uh, design. So thank you for listening and I'll be happy to answer any question you may have. Thank you. <laughs>